guys, welcome to yet another lesson of Canvasology. And on this particular episode, we'll be talking about something that is uh, very intricate and has been a debate over so many uh, car forums. And uh, on this one, I'm going to tell you uh, why it is illegal. Yes, to Sichotane, it is illegal to drive a car with foreign number plates in Kenya unless you meet some of these uh, conditions that I'm going to share with you on this particular episode. And as usual, Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. I'll be your Conversologist, Eric Wokabi, Eric with a CK on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, we value your feedback on Conversations. Uh, so do follow us on our social media handles, Conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, do follow our Auto Clinic, Conversations Auto Clinic on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, now, now, now. There are several scenarios uh, in which you will be, or you will find yourself driving a car with foreign number plates on Kenyan soil. Number one is if you are a diplomat. Uh, number two is if you're in the transport business and your, you know, your vehicles traverse different countries within Africa or even on a global scale. Uh, thirdly, you might be one of these people who wants to buy cars at a very cheap budget from Uganda, Southern Sudan, and Tanzania? <laughs> yes, and there have been so there have there has been a discussion on uh, most car groups and forums whereby people are selling Ugandan registered vehicles or Southern Sudan registered vehicles or even T Tanzanian registered vehicles at very good prices, and these vehicles are clean. These vehicles look nice, and they try to tell you that. They, you can actually use these cars locally. And let me tell you, it is illegal. Yes, it is, it is not allowed by the law. Even KRA officially scrapped out the provisions for, you know, a normal kawaida monanchi roaming around with a premium nyoka <laughs> with Ugandan plates. So what, what if you really need to drive with those plates? What conditions must you meet? There are several conditions and there are several documents you need. First of all, if your car is from uh, the East African region or the Comesa region, uh, and you're driving it in Kenya, and say it has South African plates, uh, Ugandan plates, uh, uh, Southern Sudan number plates, Tanzanian number plates, you need to have a proof of ownership. Yes, if you're, or if somebody has sent you to, you know, to drive that car through, assuming it's a diplomat. For a diplomat, you only have to prove your, diplomatic status, then you'll use the car freely. In fact, hakuna mtu watakuuliza. If, if now the diplomat has selected you to drive the car on his behalf, you need a power of attorney. Yes. Uh, or even if, you know, power of attorney may be given to an agent of the owner of that particular car. So the only way you are going to drive a diplomat's car in Kenyan soil with foreign number plates is if you have an, a, a power of attorney. There is also another provision. Assuming you have, uh, let's, let me use Conversations. Conversations is uh, a company, but what if Conversations was Conversations Motoring Agency East African Limited? Wokabi would be allowed to drive a car with Ugandan or Tanzanian uh, number plates. Uh, however, I would need a power, of attorney, a power of attorney to nominate me as an agent of Conversations uh, working in Kenya or driving the car through Kenyan soil. That is very important that you need to know. However, also the company must prove its presence in the East African countries. Nanajua, this one will bring now the further question. Why do we have some bus companies like uh, Mashpoa and Modern Coast who have buses registered in Uganda? Yes, uh, they do have buses registered in Uganda. But remember, these are East African companies. And again, they are also in transport. So their cars can roam around freely. Same case to... Uh, the, the, the transit vehicles and uh, also vehicles operating uh, within the Comesa region or within the African region and they are commercial. For instance, uh, a, 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 a truck from Rwanda can transverse through Uganda and Kenya without, you know, not much uh, of, of a disturbance because it's, it's a commercial vehicle that is ferrying goods across these countries. Like in you and you buy your premium yoka and you are told you can use this car in Kenya, one, you will not have... Uh, you will not have any power of attorney. So that is illegal. But now there is another thing that most brokers are, or even dealers are tricking people into. They tell you, you can get a temporary import permit for your car. But for you to get a temporary import permit, it's actually called uh, the, the C32. 
the C32 is for cars that are that are just maybe traversing into Kenya. So unakuja on the you, you can uh, maybe have a definite uh, a definite timeline of how long you're going to be in the country. That is when you get the C32. And it's remember it's it's a it's a it's a temporary importation of road vehicles. So it's temporary. If you're going to get a C32 on your car, it has to have a definite time period. So don't be duped by anyone telling you you only need a temporary importation permit. No. You it actually needs for you to get it and that's why it's called temporary. Yeah, meaning it's not here for good. At some point it's bound to go back to wherever uh, the car is registered in. And now there is also the question of what about cars that are outside the Comesa region? Sometimes I am sure guys have seen cars from uh, Great Britain, cars from as far as Europe for guys who are traversing through this uh, through the countries uh Uko, Namibia some left hand drive vehicles some very interesting vehicles as well sometimes you have rally cars coming into the country uh, for for some competitions of some sort and they have to run with their you know foreign registration uh, plates there's a few things you need uh, this one is going to be a very technical episode so you must listen pretty keenly you need if if you're outside Comesa Number one, you need a valid international circulation permit. That is what is uh, most guys from the UK, especially the, uh, the, the military personnel from the UK, uh, and they have their UK registered cars in Kenya, or even rally, rally cars, they'll always tell you about a document called the Canet de Passage. In short, in Aitangwa Canet. So if you have a Canet, uh, that does, that, it's not the only document that you need to have that car here. Uh, you will also need what you call uh, the C32. You must, you must import, you must have a C32, meaning that car can only be here temporarily. Yes, but again, remember, if you if you are military personnel working in Kenya with your foreign uh, registered vehicle, again, you will be Kwahi category uh, diplomats because you can prove that you are a foreigner working in Kenya temporarily. So your car is allowed to be around without much pressure. Then remember, even with the with the canet, you you still need what is called a foreign motor vehicle permit. That is, if you come from co outside the Comesa region, you need a foreign motor vehicle permit, uh, and that is different from the C32. Then on top of that, if your car is not registered in Kenya, you will need to get a uh, or even in East Africa, per se, other guys are Uganda. When you are crossing the border, you need what you need. You need a third party insurance policy. Yes, because uh, apparently insurance has jurisdiction. Most insurance companies may, may not insure vehicles outside the Kenyan border, uh, but we have a few, uh, like, uh, allow me to give names, like Direct Line, I think they do uh, insure cars even outside, even within, uh, outside uh, the Kenyan jurisdiction. Remember, even uh, fleet management also does have jurisdiction, and also even warranties have jurisdiction but there are a few countries that are also extending the warranties even when the ke the vehicle is outside the Kenyan border so usiende pale kwa border you want to cross over to as a place as near as Arusha and you want to say that no I mean ni kona comprehensive no you will need a third party insurance policy for you to traverse to that other foreign country there are however some isolated cases for instance i have bought a car from south africa and it's within the, importa the importation age limit of cars. Okay, I can get a canet, I can get uh, the temporary import certificate uh, for, to have the car within Kenyan soil. But what if I think I don't want to return this car? What do you do? If the car is less than, okay, it's not over seven years old, you can unaizaenda pale ulipe duty na upewe Kenyan number plates. In fact, even if you have a car, you buy a car from Uganda, uh, say 2016, 2015, which are allowable into Kenya right now because the age limit is uh, seven years, you can have that car registered in Kenya after you pay the duty. But kama imepita over seven years, apo sasa ndipo story inakuwa. But now this brings forth yet another situation or another scenario. Uh, you have been working, say, in... Uh, in Tanzania or in Uganda or in Southern Sudan, and your car is maybe a 1998 vehicle, 2000 vehicle, and you're coming back to Kenya. Well, you'll be given a temporary import permit. Now, if you are returning to Kenya for good, 
So you will prove that you are working in Southern Sudan, in uh, Uganda, or even in Tanzania, or any other country. You will have to prove that you have been working there. Then you bring the car. You will be given a temporary importation certificate. However, you will be within a certain timeline, you will be required to register the car in Kenya. Now, what this will bring, you will be exempted from uh, the eight-year eight rule. So even if it's a 1998, you will be exempted. It will be given. Kama sa ni 1998, itakuja ipewe KDH. Kama tu gariza. Yes, because, but you have to prove that you have been working abroad and you have been using that car. You have to, first of all, prove the ownership of the car from the other side. Eh? However, even if you are a returning resident and your car is above the required uh, age of a vehicle that is seven years you, or eight years, Sijui adujawai skizana kama inakuanga 7 ama 8. It's a very, because of something called the month of registration. So, but basically it's the 7 year rule. So, even if you're a returning resident, you still have to pay duty based on the CRSP of that car. But again, if it's a 1998, year 2000 vehicle, duty ni pesa kidogo. It's negligible. And with that, you'll be able to get the recent number plate. It's a registered afresh, na ita bear the current number plate. That is why sometimes you come across some cars. Nitu kama XGK. If you buy a car from a parastato or a, gov or a government or organization and the duty was not paid, you have to pay duty. The vehicle is deregistered, then it is re-registered afresh. But remember, before that car is registered, in, even if you are a returning re resident, before you get that new registration, you have to deregister the car from the mother country. Lazima would deregister. And that is why you get a certificate of deregistration so that NTSA can give you a new number plate. Tumeskizana hadi hapo. Sawa, sawa. As I come to a conclusion, there are a few things I would like to point out. There are people who buy cars from... Uganda, by the way, is, is one of the hotspots for this. You go buy a car in Uganda, then you come and change its particulars. Unaenda unatafuta primionyoka huko. You know, primionyoka are the... the there, are, there are cars that are prone to this. Primionyoka, uh, Kaldina. Uh, some of these ancient... Especially the, the pre-2000s uh, Toyotas, RAV4... Toyota Shark, Kizi, Natumika, Kama, Matatu. People go, you buy a vehicle from Uganda, it crosses the, the border, then mnaenda mnachonga chisis number fresh, na engine number fresh. Such that you might not even be able to know. For instance, I will, I will not mention where. We went for a pre-purchase inspection. Very nice looking RAV4. Uh, it had, uh, it was very, extremely clean. Almost too clean to, to be, you know, of the number plate it had. So after doing a keen inspection on it, we found that, you know, the car is supposed to, those RAV4s were running on 1AZ engines, but it is running on a 1ZZ engine. But what has the, the, the person who sold it, the, uh, what did the person who sold, who sold it to the car and owner do? Uh, they went, they grinded the whole engine number and they wakatengeneza uh, engine number yao. Same case to the VIN number, the chassis, wakaenda, wakatengeneza nayo, wakato wakale ka placard, wakaweka kai So such that all, everything reads as per the car. And guess what? Even the person who owned the car did not know because he had owned the car for close to 15 years. So the, the initial person who sold the car to him is the one, Alifanya Hiyo Mazingaomboe. They, they did the whole, uh, the, the Ugandan vehicle was transformed into a Kenyan car. So that is why we always tell you guys, no matter how clean the car is, it's always good to do a, you know, a, a, a thorough pre-purchase inspection to make sure that you're not buying a car. Because if you're, if you're arrested, Nagari Mechongewa Chesis, that's a very serious offense. And uh, you, you might rot in jail for that. So be very keen. And that is why we always emphasize, if you're buying a locally used vehicle, pre-purchase inspection is very, very important. No matter how, the, how clean the car is, no matter who owns the car, it's important sana to always do some due diligence. Because I can be owning a car that, is, that was previously registered in Uganda, innocently, bila mimi kujua. So, recap, brief recap. Kama unauziwa gari, if, you're, if somebody is selling you a Ugandan registered vehicle, a Tanzanian registered vehicle, a Southern Sudan registered vehicle, duly note that that car cannot be registered in Kenya and it will, be not, it will not be legal for you to run the car on Kenyan soil. So, the only exception is, kama yo gari seni ya 2015, unaiza nunua ulipe juti, 
iwe kwa namba ya Kenya but remember you have to deregister the car from the mother country either southern sudan uganda or tanzania because for you to get fresh registration you need a deregistration certificate and your mana guard is a singapore they come with a with a sticker uh, branded deregistered car sawa sawa the other thing is uh, if you are a returning resident you can bring a car that is older than 7 years prove that you have been working outside there then pay duty kidogo gari upewe namba plate but let no one lie to you that you can that you can run a, a foreign registered vehicle in Kenya freely you you later become a cash cow and even after becoming a cash cow your car will eventually get grounded so if you are running gari you a something tis tis something ama these days that is a burundi zimekuwa mob Uh, kindly do you know that if you if you're not a diplomat if you do not run a company that is East African Limited or a company within the Comesa region if you, <laughs> if you're not a returning res- if you're not in transit also uh, so the temporary import permit the C32 does not work it it will give you a specified period of time upon which if you go outside the stipulated timeline you might not uh, be in good books with the police sana sana DCI and the other you know crime crimes unit that we have in our country today so i hope that we have all understood what you need to run a car with foreign plates uh, the documents you need uh, and also it's now it has now dawned upon you that it's illegal to drive around with a car registered in another country without we know going through these conditions so so i hope this has been an insightful episode i've been your conversologist uh, giving you this weekly dose of conversology eric with a ck uh, on facebook twitter and instagram na pia please subscribe to the channel tufikishe ligi so 100000 uh, subs that is where we are headed to natunaomba subscribe pia it's the cold season bana buy merchandise ama nunua diaper sawa sawa <laughs> so over and out and uh, on wednesday we have a special review coming up and i'm sure you guys are going to like it over and out